The guy learns Swahili. He said, right, you alim. Bring him in Swahili. We want to debate with him. Can you say no? In your language. So the Muslims were forced to accept. And Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi, he accepted the challenge. He was forced to accept the challenge. And the debate takes place. And I'm told in the book that 100,000 people gathered. There was no sound system, no horns, nothing. How the voice traveled, Allah knows best. But people were there watching from far and they say, well, what's going on? Somebody is giving a commentary. You say, you know, the Maulana gave one uppercut like that. And this guy said, this. commentaries are going on. No sound system. There was no sound system those days. So debate starts. With the reverend, reverend founder by name, reverend founder, the Britisher, he suggests to the Maulana that Maulana Sahib, respected Maulana Alim, get started. So the Maulana says, you see, Christianity preceded Islam by 600 years. As such, you are our elder brother. You are 600 years older than us. And according to our culture, our elder brother has the first chance. <laughs> Number two, you see, you are our guest. You are a guest in our country. No doubt an unwelcome guest, but still you are a guest. So according to our culture, you have the first preference. So the reverend was forced to start. And he started with a question, with a poser, with a riddle. Said Maulana Sahib in Urdu, speaking in Urdu. Maulana Sahib respected Alim, Maulana. Where is your Prophet Muhammad now, now, this minute? Where is he now? So the Maulana thought for a moment. And he said, he is in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the second question. He said, all right, all right. If your prophet was with this Allah, where was he when his grandson Hussein was martyred at Karbala? When Yazid chopped off his head, where was your prophet Muhammad then? So the Maulana again thought for a moment and he said he was still in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the third question. It was planned strategy. He said, all right, all right. If your Muhammad was with his Allah when his grandson Hussein was martyred, killed, slaughtered at Karbala, did he not ask his Allah for help? Say, Ya Bari Tala, oh my Lord, look what they're doing to my grandson. Please help him out of his difficulty. Didn't he ask his Allah for help? And there was a long pause. And the, the, the priest couldn't hold his patience. He started stamping his feet. So come on, come on. Did he not ask his Allah for help? It's natural, natural. If you have a big brother, somebody's bullying you, you say, brother, look, man, look at this guy here. What is he doing to me? You naturally, you call for help. And your Allah is there, the almighty, the all powerful, and you're not going to ask him for help? He says, come on, come on. Did he or didn't he ask his Allah for help? So the Maulana, he said, yes, he did. He did ask Allah for help. Then what did Allah say? Because we know he wasn't saved. What did Allah say? And there was an inordinate, very long pause. And the priest again lost his patience, started stamping. He said, come on, come on. What did Allah say? So the Maulana starts. He says, Allah cried. Allah cried. So what? Allah cried. He said, yes, Allah cried. He said, I couldn't save my own son, Jesus. How can I save your grandson? <laughs> and the debate was over. The debate was over. You see, 